He would steal my shoes, my daughter's lacrosse stick, cookbooks, bath rugs, mops, a lot of socks. Whatever he could find around the house, JB was using these materials to dam up doorways. He just stole my front doormat. That's all cute. However, he did take a liking to all of my wood furniture. This is why beavers do not belong in your house. JB. No, no. And my baseboards and my doors and my drywall. I was very tolerant. He's a beaver. He's doing what a beaver naturally does. Moving the bed, building a dam with the bed. JB was discovered around a pond somewhere and he was just one stray little beaver. This is my 12th year rehabilitating wildlife and something's not quite right because he should be with his parents so this little guy needed some help. The first week when JB came to me, I had to keep putting him in my bathtub. In nature, it's very important that he has access to fresh water. Here we go, you ready? When I first started putting JB in the bathtub, he wanted right out. But over time, he took little dives underwater. He put his little hands up by the faucet and waited for the water to come out. JB has adored blankets from day one. All of the corners have little suckle marks on them. <laughs> JB became more mobile. He needed to walk around the house more. What are you doing? However, JB is a wild animal. He should be outside. He was definitely ready to move on. This is the potential new home for JB the beaver. Somebody that builds ponds called up and said, hey, we're gonna build JB a pond. Yes, come on. Finally, the day was here and it was kind of sad. We thought he was gonna go in the pond right away. He did not want to get in the water. I had to get in the water and then he followed behind. JB is so healthy and very content in his environment. A lot of people follow JB's stories. One day I received a phone call from Peter Gross and he was very interested in how healthy JB looked. I'm very excited to show Peter around the facility. Here he is. Hi, JB. I've seen many beavers in the wild, never been this close to a beaver. To be this close to a beaver and have him be that comfortable around people was quite an experience. If JB likes Peter, he will probably hold on to his leg a little bit. So well, I can hear him now. He's, this is, this is mm -hmm. a very affectionate sound mm -hmm. that he's mm -hmm. making. He might mm -hmm. make to another beaver. This outdoor enclosure, it's roomy. He has a two level falls. He had a babbling brook waterfall. He had to figure out his entry point of the pond. His favorite spot to get in the pond is under that boulder, and then he pops out on the other side of the water. And first beaver I've ever met that has kind of blankie. When we transitioned him, his favorite blankets and stuffed animals did go with him. He stuffs as much blanket in his mouth, and then he falls fast asleep. Every once in a while, he'll decide that maybe it's too warm, and he just moves his blankets and stuffed animals right out of his house. This is a great size facility for them. I know I've seen beavers mm -hmm. in the wild. Once they've established on a river where they're gonna build a dam, they'll stick pretty close to that same small area. Mm -hmm. Part of his treatment was having to be handled by people all the time. Right here, right here. The sad news is he can't be released like so many animals are here, but the good news is he's become a wonderful ambassador. But one of nature's most yes. important animals. Yes. They create homes for literally thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of species of wildlife. Mm -hmm. They are very important. This is why I love the education component. Tonight we are teaching a group of kiddos coming in. So I can't yes. wait to see the yes. reactions of kids meeting a beaver up close in person, yes. face yeah. to face. Come on in, have a seat. Your special awesome. guest has arrived. So would you guys like to see JB? Yes. yes. Okay, let's get him out. 
Wildlife ambassadors are very, very important because it will empower people to be better stewards of the environment. How can they all drive those big heavy trees? That's a very good question. How can those little beavers drag those big heavy trees? Well, they chew through the base of the tree, it falls down, and then they chew the branches off, and then they drag them over along the land and they swim it over to the dam. The current pushes it up against the dam. Now they've created a pond. And why is that important? All of a sudden it's habitat for fish. And then there are waterfowl that come by. They now have a pond in which to feed. This beaver is going to help all sorts of turtles and reptiles and amphibians come in there and live. He will never be able to be released because he is completely attached to humans now. He thinks you're mom. Mm -hmm. So he will always be here, but the good news is, is he's a wonderful ambassador, so you can see what amazing animals these are. You guys, thank you so much yeah. for coming out. I hope that you learned a little bit, and then you can go out and spread good word about wildlife as well. Yeah, thanks nice all. meeting all of you. Yeah. What a thrill to have so many young people come to the class. They will leave here and share this with their parents. Hopefully their parents will talk about it, about how to treat wildlife in our wild lands. JB, I'm gonna miss you. Yeah, you were a great ambassador out there with all those kids today, JB. It's like, I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs>